Hey, Coach, has got a fantastic guest for you tonight. Uh, you can tell by looking at us, we're both uh, we're both new to the game, rookie coaches. Uh, my guest tonight is – that was a joke, Coach, because we're, we're all old looking. Uh, my guest tonight is Mark Sullivan, who is the uh, defensive coordinator at Worcester, Worcester Academy. Say it again. I messed it up. That's fine. Worcester Academy. Worcester. Okay. Worcester Academy, which is uh, just west of Boston. And uh, Coach has a fantastic YouTube channel. I, I, I don't know how I came across it, but I love everything you do. I'm a 3-4 guy, and Coach is a, uh, is a veteran 3-4 D coordinator. And, uh, and the, you got to check out the channel because he does a fantastic job, does a lot of stuff up on the board. Tonight he's going to share his, uh, his favorite blitz with us. But first, Coach, I want to talk about you. And then I want to talk about your YouTube channel because I, I want to I want guys to find that channel because you you put so much good information out there. So tell us about you first, and then start talking about your channel a little bit. Okay, uh, very briefly. Um, my dad was a Hall of Fame high school football coach, so I was very fortunate in that respect. And so I uh, injured my knee, was done playing my after my sophomore season in college. So I immediately started coaching for my high school coach. So that was 38 years ago and the gray hair is not lying to you. I've been very, very blessed in many ways. I played for a great football program at UMass Amherst and a lot of the three, four things that we did, I've incorporated over the past 38 years. Um, I feel awfully fortunate to be able to work with young men. I've worked at both the collegiate level for 24 years and the high school level and now prep school level. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, my channel, MJS Coaching Football, you can find it on YouTube. I've got everything from, uh, I have multiple ways to present the information. I do it, I, I narrate the playbook that we have in Huddle. I'll narrate just a film clip. I'll combine the two. We'll go over the playbook first and then show it to you in film in the same presentation. We have whiteboard presentations. So I like to keep it variety because people learn and, and, and watch things differently. Uh, we go everything for now. What I have available is our base front system, our base coverage system, our three by one checks, our base uh, blitz families, plug, go, combo, and dog. I have other families up there. Uh, in the hopefully not too distant future, we'll have drills on there for individual, all positional groups. We'll have group drills, team drills, and eventually I like to get everything on there, including how we run our meetings for coaches, how we run our player meetings, anything and everything. There's no sense taking it to the grave, hence why seven months ago I started the channel. And it was, it was that base that was, I was going to ask that, what was your motivation for starting it? It's just sharing the information? Yeah, that and, you know, unfortunately the pandemic has hit the nation and the world very hard, but it gave me free time and we didn't have any games for the first time. We only practiced. So with the free time, I decided in November after we start practicing, it's time to start sharing the information. And so, yes, that was the impetus. Well, coach, I'm, I'm glad you did, man. Cause uh, like I said, I, I've caught a bunch of your videos and uh, very high level, but simple. You do a great job of teaching it and breaking it down and making it understandable to everybody. And, you know, and I'm a three, four guy. So really I'm a, I'm a slant 50 guy and we just call it a three, four. Now is that, is that, how, <laughs> is that how you are? Pretty much. Yep. We are old school. Well, uh, I asked you to come on and, and, and share your favorite blitz with us. So uh, take it away. And then I want to finish up by talking about the channel again. All right. We'll do Thank you, coach. All right. So what, what I have up here, is a base 11 formation that uh, we would call Dallas. Okay, anything that begins with the letter D means doubles two by two. Okay, so you got the pro side with the tight end, you got the two wide receivers for us. I mean, I'm a state school kid, born and bred public school system, right? L and R. So our pass strength is to the two wide receivers. That would be a rip. To identify where the tight end is, it's just simply left call. And if you were on the right, it'd be a right call, but it's the only time we use left and right. Okay. So 
these two guys, our Rover and Mike, are different body types, a bigger, more physical outside linebacker, same for the inside. They travel together. Backer goes opposite, and, and the dime, in, in our base concept, I know, I know I don't want to get into too much, but they go to the lizard rip. Our secondary, again, right, follow my heritage, state school, the field, uh, excuse me, the field corner and the free safety, they go to the pass strength, they travel together. The whip and the boundary, they travel, they go opposite. So that's how we get lined up. This is our base three, four front with our two high secondary shell that we call 50 to your point coach, right? The old 50 slant. So I call it 50 and it's a three, four. What I'm going to share with you tonight is one of, it's my favorite when it should be used, of course, uh, inside plug blitz for a pass situation that what we call Mo. And I'll just, I'm not going to go over the coverage, but the coverage we'll say is medium because you can vary the coverage. Okay. So for us, right, if, if nobody's noticed, every single position on defense has a different letter. Right, R E N S M B D F S F C W B C. That's on purpose because it makes it easy to teach your players. I don't care if they're at Alabama, Worcester Academy, you know, parts in between. Every blitz that begins with the letter M means the Mike. Our Mike linebacker is the blitzer. Okay, he's going to make what we call Lucky Ringo. That's our blitz designation. Lucky again, right? L and R. Ringo, we let the player who the blitz is designed for make that call. Hey, if the offense is sharp enough to pick up when that guy or that whoever makes the call is blitzing, then, you know, good for them. But I, I, it hasn't happened yet in a long time. So this would be a lucky. Okay. So what 50 mo is. Okay, and this gets real messy real fast. This is what we call a same side AB read plug. And so I'm going to bring all of this to life for you and explain how we come to that. Okay. We're not reinventing the wheel. Right, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, right? That's every way, every, I believe everybody or most people designate their gaps. This is an A, B on this side, okay? It's gonna be a left lucky blitz on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the three defensive linemen and what their responsibilities are, okay? So the nose, okay? He hears lucky, he knows he's slanting away from that. So he's slanting into the right A gap and he's rushing the passer. Again, we call this in a pass situation. Both defensive ends are slanting into C gap and they have what is called outside cage. I don't call anything contain. We don't use the word contain in the run support. We do not use the word contain when we're talking about the pass either. Outside cage, okay? So now here's where this comes in, right? Same side A, read plug. This is also what we call, stop mixing up my colors here. This is what we call the Gilligan concept. For Coach and I, Gilligan's Island, we, we remember that. I mean, it was probably quite a few of you are scratching your head right now. Gilligan's Island, I've never heard of it, right? So we call it Gilligan because in the three, four, you're always going to have an uncovered lineman, usually the guard. So for us, what we're doing is we're putting that guard on an island on purpose, okay? What we see more often than not is the offensive tackles, again, in a passing situation, whether they're hard setting or soft setting, 
they're responsible for C gap on their side when it's in the three, four, like big on big, right? So that leaves these three to block everybody else. Typically, the guards are double read guys, right? They're reading inside out. So what we purposely do with this guard in a lucky, in the same side AB read concept that we call Mo, which tells the mic, he's making the call and it tells the backer that he is the read defender, okay? So everything starts with the football. So as an example, every drill, every rep we do, we have a stick ball. I mean, the only times that we ever use cadence is when we're doing drills, practicing blitzing, as an example, at the end of practice, that's our conditioning and to make the kids mentally focused, we'll try and draw them off sides. At the end of the day, it was still a stick ball. If you don't have a stick ball, just lift your foot. Everything for us begins on movement and that movement is the football. So the Mike linebackers key in that football, he's going first. When that ball snapped, he's the A-gap plugger, okay? And we tell him you are gonna blitz as if it's your single, what we just call a mick, Mike and A-gap. Okay, reading the near edge of the guard. What we're doing is we're put, forcing this guard on, on the island, Gilligan, he's gotta make a decision. Is he gonna help? Because now see the center's got a slanting nose, right? Or is he gonna continue on the double read? Okay, it's all good. Doesn't matter the mic, that's what he's gonna do. Here is the guy, the read guy, that it matters. And this is why I love it and it's my favorite. So let's take this scenario. The guard is gonna block down, thinking he did a great job, right? Boom. On the snap of the football, same thing, right? It always starts with football to your uh, guard. Even the blitzing linebacker, football, he's keeping an eye on the guard. And I'll go over that when we get to the end. Assuming his guard pass sets, right? He's quick shuffle and now his read is this. He goes butt side of the guard. That's the A, B read plug on the same side. If the guard has blocked down, and he's going to be a B gap. If for some reason the guard stayed, like say C gap, B gap, let's say some type of a zone scheme, gap scheme, then he too will be in the A gap. That's fine with us. He goes butt side of the guard. That way the guard can't block him. Okay. And that's why I love it. If it's a situation where you're most likely going to be in a five step drop, you're going to have more of a soft set from your offensive line. They're going to be big on big, big on big, big on big. One of these two is helping the nose. The other guy is a double read. This is a very effective pressure. Okay, I mean, there's no pressure that's a guarantee. I mean, I just, we acknowledge that up front. And when it works, fantastic. When it doesn't, we, the kids know. Okay. <clears throat> so for me, in the correct situations, that's one of my go-to pressures. I, I love the uh, the island concept. I, I I think more more people need to do it. We we uh, we kind of stole that idea from. I think Manny Diaz does it off of his zone fires or his, uh, his yeah his fires, mm -hmm. and uh, and I just fell in love with it. Uh, we still struggle getting the uh, the the fat. We tell our our linebacker. You know, you need to you need to read it like a, a, a running back run the zone and go to go to space. But I think your way, your your verbiage is much easier. Go to his butt. That, that's the simplest way to teach it that I've ever heard. So we're going to steal that from you immediately. Oh, I, I love that concept. I, I mean, I, I'm all about we talk about two things, play fast. And it's actually one thing, two words, play fast. And to us, that means, you know, you're expecting your guys to do everything full speed and react full speed and process full. 
the more you can simplify it, the easier it is up here for them to do that. And we always say, if you can play fast here, you can play fast with your feet. So love it, love it coach. Oh, absolutely. So one of the key coaching points, I'll go back to the one that usually we see the most, the guard is going to help block the plugging linebacker. We always tell them, go butt side of them, make sure you cop a free feel because especially young kids, they're going to round it and there's, you know, four or five feet in between. And because they didn't cop a feel, you know, rub off the butt, that cost them a sack or at least get in the way of the quarterback. So I think that's a key coaching point. The other thing that's a part of this, and I stole this from the University of New Hampshire about 20 years ago, Coach McConnell up there, one of the greatest coaches in New England history, Division I F FCS football, is the concept of what we call readout. Okay, so what's meant by readout? Again, this got messy real fast, so I'll kind of start from the beginning. Doesn't take me too long. Okay, as especially the backer who's got the time, if his guard is pulling, he's gonna scream, pull, 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 pull. And the Mike linebacker is gonna read out. They're gonna communicate that to one another. He's not gonna continue the blitz. He's gonna read out it. Same with, as he's plugging, if that guy's pulling, he's gonna make the pull, pull call and he will read out. So when the guard is going, is pulling, right? So in this case, pulling to his partner inside, he makes the pull, pull, the partner reads out. Same thing over there, partner reads out. If, let's say they, they decide to run a toss, or for some reason they pull the guard, it's a boot, and this guy is gonna be the lead blocker, right? As he's going, if his guy's pulling to him, he's gonna read out. We just simplify it. Sure, there might be a time where the kid comes flying through anyway because he didn't read out and he makes the play and he thinks, oh my God, I'm the greatest player ever. And so you got to quietly coach him up. You know, nice job. But what should I should have read out perfect, you know? So that's the readout concept stolen from Coach McConnell about 20 years ago from UNH. Can you talk about your outside cage technique with the ends? Absolutely. So instead of saying contain, and I can tell you why. <clears throat> there's a tendency and certainly not all players but when you say contain kids want to run as wide as they can because like you've been talking preaching this the athletic quarterback you can't get outside you and all that right so they tend to run wider and, and, and in essence the sidelines doing the same thing so what we teach is this outside cage what is meant by that okay so we'll keep the blitz Right outside cage. Let's say that's where the quarterback sets up. If you have outside cage, then you want to get to a point you're roughly two yards outside of where the quarterback is setting up. So we want to get them literally in what we would call a cage. Now, is it two yards going to always happen? Of course not. If the kid's five yards away, that's acceptable. So it's kind of an overcoaching point when you say give them two yards. Now we always talk about, look, don't take out tape measures, guys, right? Don't freak out. If you're three, four, five yards, that's okay. And if the quarterback starts to scramble, you got to kind of widen the cage and then you squeeze the cage. So that's why we use the term outside cage <clears throat> because I don't want kids just widening, thinking they're doing the job. And then the quarterback just turns up the field, you know, five, 10 yards inside of them. So. Coach, you did absolutely fantastic and coaches now you understand what i'm saying it, that, that teaching one blitz how many uh, awesome defensive uh secrets and concepts that he just teaches just in one play and that's how every video he has is it's just a, a high level but very simplified make it easier I, i'm still on the butt side deal on the on the blitz read uh i'm gonna i'm gonna throw a question at you uh, and we didn't, I didn't prep you on this, but What's you and I both started when we, when we started on the defensive side, yep. there wasn't spread, you know, there oh. was, we had to get ready for I formation and wing T, 
what what's been the biggest adjustment for you uh you know now that probably week in and week out you're seeing spread and maybe a wing tee every now and then what was you know I, I was impressed normally when a guy gets up there and show a blitz he draws up in the in the eye formation and you you drew up in a in a uh in a in a double uh pistol so so uh, you're seeing it every week what what's like what mindset adjustment, what was the big adjustment going from when we used to have to just pound, you know, stop the run and that's all we had to worry about to today's offenses. Okay. So, you know, for us up here, well, I'm going to say it was 2009 around, I was at Worcester state university at the time, you know, divisions three, uh, new England football conference, real good football. We started to see that season and then it's never stopped. No more two back. It was all one back. You know, it was a lot of 11. And then by 2010, it was a little bit more 10 personnel. And then by 2012, forget it. You saw everything, including empty. So from 2000, and actually it started in 2008. So the spring of 2009, long-winded answer. We changed our insertion schedule to all one back first. And we saved the two back stuff for last. So we did it in reverse, essentially. So that helped a lot. So the kids could understand better, number one. And then within the whole spread scheme, the two things that have caused the biggest headache, the fast up tempo, when the teams are trying to get the ball off as fast as possible. So anywhere from you know 25 seconds to 30 seconds left on the play clock, that, that's a lot. So that's why we have signboards we went to that immediately because you, you can't signal you don't have the time you're lucky if you can substitute right so you have to have a coach that just handles the substitutions which is a whole nother animal so whatever your game plan is you have them on a signboard and that's what we decided to do the other thing that's both part of the up tempo but just in general the spread the rpo game you know getting kids to understand that you can't as a single player, I'm not asking you to defend the run and defend the, but you can't defend both. And even within the run, I'm not ever asking a player to defend the quarterback and the dive. You just can't do it. So what, what we've been able to successfully do, but it just it takes a lot of time, obviously, is get players to understand this group in here, these guys, let's just say we're going to line up, play ball. Well, these guys are going to handle the dive. These are the inside guys. Look where they're lined up. They're inside dive defenders. These guys can play the quarterback, right? I'm again over, being overly simplistic, but you got to start here and then develop, right? And then our DBs are always pass first. We always tell them, you're the pass defender first, you react to run. And so to answer your question, that's been the biggest challenge. Up tempo, super fast, RPOs and flipping it. And no longer is it this way, but it, initially the big emphasis on two back and wing T and this, that, and all those schemes to more of the open, wide open stuff. So I, I know you didn't get to play this year, but what, give me a typical, like, how many uh, are, are you going to see any wing tee anymore? Are you going to see any kind of power run anymore? Or is it strictly you're going to see spread week in and week out? On the schedule we have going forward, and it's it, we're definitely, I feel very, I shouldn't say definitely, there's no definites, right? But it looks highly likely since the governor of Mass said we're almost at, you know, 66% fully vaccinated in the state. So I think we'll be playing games in the fall. Nobody on the schedule is a, is a per se two back team. So that's all we're going to see is versions of one back. Sure, you might see the motions and jet sweeps and, you know, derivations of the wing tee, but nothing like the old fashioned two back. When I was at UMass, Tubby Raymond was the head coach at Delaware. So I, I know that wing tee. My knees can, can speak to it. <laughs> I, I hope I answered your question. Oh yeah, yeah. Per, I just, you know, I just, I don't know. If, I know I don't have a concept of what kind of what kind of schemes you're seeing up there. Nope, nope, nope. I, I know uh, we're single A. When I was when I was in Triple A five six years ago, we would see majority spread, but every once in a while you'd see a wing T guy that was still pretty dang good at it. Mm -hmm. And single A, 
we run the gamut. We'll see every, we'll see uh, air raid to, you know, three back, two tight end, we'll, single wing. We sell, we got, we had two different kinds of single wing tees this year. Uh, so we'll, we'll see it all in, on the single A level. But as you go up three, four A, it's almost strictly, uh, strictly spread. So uh, I think you do a great job of uh, being, a, I, I, I think that's the beauty of the three, four is, you, it don't matter how they line up. You're, you're going to be able to line up and have a great game plan against them. And obviously you do a great job with it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Tell us one more time. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, send out a, a tweet here in a minute to talk about uh, talking to you tonight, but tell us one more time, your YouTube channel. Cause I want everyone to go subscribe and, and start watching your videos. Thank you. It is MJS coaching football when my email is coach MJ Sullivan at gmail.com. Awesome coach. You did fantastic. I, I knew you were going to knock it out of the park. And uh, I just, I just hope everyone goes to your channel because uh, like, I, I promise you guys, every video is this good. You know, he, he just does an awesome job of uh, taking the complex and making it simple. And obviously got a lot of experience, uh, uh, you know, uh, stopping, stopping people from doing what they want to do. Thank you so much, coach. Thank you. Appreciate it.